These color bars are provided as a reference for you to adjust your playback system, ensuring maximum picture quality. Please adjust your sets now. On previous tapes, we've shown you a variety of camera and exposure techniques. Today, we'd like to illustrate a number of suggestions that we feel are important to making quality photographs. Lens selection and the proper use of tripod are the key components which we will discuss in this tape today. We will also discuss the advantages of different format cameras. These include 35 millimeter cameras, two and a quarter or medium format cameras, and four by five or large format cameras. This word format refers to the actual size of the film in which the camera uses. We're going to start today by discussing the large format camera. Four by five cameras are basically a box which holds film. The camera is made up of a bellows and two standards which move independently. Each camera has a film holder and ground glass, which is located in the rear of the camera. Located in the front of the bellows is a lens complete with shutter mounted on a lens board. These large format cameras use a film which is 4 inches by 5 inches and comes in sheets as opposed to traditional rolls of film. These images, which were all taken with a large format camera, illustrate the incredible quality available with the large image size of the 4x5 film. Commercial photographers rely on this type of camera for a variety of assignments, including still life, advertising, and architectural, just to name a few. Medium format cameras, such as this Hasselblad, provide a wide variety of applications. The film size is two and a quarter inches by two and a quarter inches, which is smaller than the four by five film, yet considerably larger than the more traditional 35 millimeter film. Okay, we're losing some sunlight. You want to do a meter reading? Yeah, take a meter reading. Okay, meter reading at uh, 4 at the 30th. Okay, that's good. That's Medium format cameras are often used for fashion photography because of the high quality needed in today's publications. The versatility of the medium format camera, the quality of lenses, and the ease of use make it a popular choice among many professional photographers. That's good. Oh, that's better. Okay, yeah. Turn a little bit, turn towards the light. That's good. The same advantages which apply to using medium format for fashion photography also exist in portrait photography. Among its many reasons for popularity in portrait sessions is that the negative size on medium format film is suitable for retouching. The most popular of all camera formats is the 35 millimeter. Its size and quickness make it the first choice in cameras for many professional applications. Ralph Clevenger shares a few tips for working with 35mm. Probably one of the biggest problems for any photographer, professional or amateur, is out of focus, blurry photographs due to camera motion, the cameras moving. It's really exaggerated with longer lenses. And one of the rules to think about when you're using longer lenses, uh, this includes uh, 100 millimeters and longer, 
is that you really shouldn't handhold a long lens at a shutter speed that is slower than the focal length of the lens. For instance, if you're shooting with a 200 millimeter lens, the slowest shutter speed you should probably use handheld is a 250th of a second. And that's going to ensure that your images are sharp. There's some other handholding techniques that can help with this, and one of them is to cradle the, the long lens, or any lens really, cradle that lens in your left hand and all the weight of the lens should be there. Use your right hand only for tripping the shutter. Tuck those elbows into your belly so that you're forming a nice support for it. Squeeze it up against your face and squeeze that shutter very carefully. Now, there's another technique that can help with this, and that's getting into a kneeling or prone position. In a kneeling position, you can use your knee as your support for your elbow. And again, this keep everything tight in there, push it up against your face, support your camera in your left hand, and squeeze that shutter. These techniques are going to ensure that your photographs come out nice and sharp. Now, let's go to the next level. Let's talk about tripods. There's a lot of different types of tripods and heads out there. The main thing to remember on any tripod and head combination that you, that you buy is that it needs to support the camera well. And you want to make sure you get a tripod that's light enough for you to carry, um, but it has to be heavy enough to support whatever lens and camera combination you want to be using. This is a ball head. Probably it's more common to see the pan and tilt heads, but it's a very personal choice about what type of head to use. With long lenses, like 400s and 300s uh, and longer, you're going to want to make sure that you have a tripod collar on that lens. It's too much stress on the camera to attach the camera to the tripod and have a big long lens sitting out there in front. So make sure that you have a tripod collar. Tripod collars also help um, because you don't have to rotate the whole head to get a vertical. You just loosen the collar, you can now rotate the camera and get a vertical shot. So there's a lot of good things about tripod uh, collars on these long lenses. One of the things to remember with your tripod is that you don't want to use the center column to get any height unless it's absolutely necessary. Once you raise the center column off the tripod, you basically have a monopod situation, and we'll talk about monopods a little later. But you always want to try and use the legs to extend the height. In terms of using the tripod, make sure that you have a strap on while you're attaching your camera and that you hold on to the camera and make sure that everything's been tightened down before you let go. Then you can take your straps off and you can feel secure that your camera isn't going to fall over on the tripod. Another tool you can use to prevent those out of focus blurry photographs is a monopod. A monopod is just that, it's a single pod or foot device and a lot of sports photographers use monopods because it gives them the freedom to move around quickly and take photographs. Now a monopod is only going to prevent motion up and down, it will not prevent motion to the side and for that reason it's a good uh, tool to use in doing pan, pan on your subject. Now, you need a ball head on a monopod because it allows you to keep the horizon straight and keep things level. Again, the monopod is providing the support, so you want your hand on top of the lens, pull down, reach in there, focus, and get your shots off. Another device that's easy to use, and it's easy to use on boats and rocks, tree limbs, and car doors, is a rice bag or some sort of a steady bag system. Okay, get that off. Now, what I've done here, instead of going down and buying a $30, $35 commercial bag, I just took a little, this is a two pound bag of rice, you can get a five pound bag, and I've covered it with duct tape. You position this on a solid subject. You always want to put something soft between a rock or a tree or the car door and your lens. And now I can cradle my lens in here and I can again shoot at very slow shutter speeds. I don't have to follow that rule of thumb of the shutter speed needs to match the focal length or, be, or greater uh, for hand holding because I'm not hand holding anymore. And again, your hand is going to come down on the top, provide the support, and allow you to get those photographs that you normally couldn't get. In this section, Ralph explains the importance of proper lens selection. There's basically three different types of lenses that a photographer chooses from. Normal focal length lenses, wide angle lenses, and telephoto lenses. 
Now, the reason why you'd pick a wide angle lens is to emphasize foregrounds. Now, there's two types of foregrounds. There's a foreground at the bottom of the frame, and there's a foreground at the top of the frame. For instance, this yucca plant here could be put at, placed at the bottom of a frame with the statue and the church behind it, whereas the palm tree here could be placed at the top of the frame, the fronds coming into the top of the frame, and still get the church and the statue in the, in the scene. So wide angle lenses should be used when there's a foreground of importance. Telephoto lenses, on the other hand, emphasize backgrounds. talking about wide angle lenses using foregrounds, telephoto lenses using backgrounds. This is the situation where I'm using my normal lens. It seems to work the best here. It gives me the best angle I need on this subject. By selecting the proper lens for a given scene, you can effectively produce dramatic images with impact. Ralph discusses the technique of utilizing flash photography in outdoors shooting situations. There's a saying you may have heard in photography that you should always put the sun over your shoulder and take pictures of people that are well lit by the sun. Well, that's going to give you a pretty flat scene. It's, it's probably better in a lot of situations to put the, your subjects back to the sun. Let the sun rim light your subject and, and shoot your photograph in that position. The problem you're going to have there is contrast. If you expose for the highlights of your subject, the rim lighting, the background scene, the, the subject in the shadow, the front of the subject, is going to be too dark. One of the ways you can solve that problem is to put your flash on. Even if you're using a point and shoot, you can pop the flash up by covering the lens, get that little flash up, and use it to fill the front of your subject. With an on-camera flash, you can either balance it with the same exposure, in other words, the light on the subject shadow side is the same exposure as the background, or you can back it off, one stop, two stops. You can do that by either backing up from your subject, getting your flash further away, or you can do it with the power settings on your flash. Another thing you might want to do, especially late in the day or early in the day when the light's real warm, is add a little warming gel to your flash, and that'll give the same color balance to the shadow side of your subject, the face of your subject, as the background scene. Okay, guys.